John here is sanding the uh, neck, the top of the, what we call the tongue of the neck to fit it into one of our bolt-on base bodies, match it up to the surface there. So put them together and they're hand fitted into the pocket to make sure it's tight and now he's like just matching up that surface so they they lay up really close to each other. On our right here is one of the shop mascots, one of John's golden retrievers, there's Satin. And we've got one of our wings for neck through the body bases and Jim's going to set it set up here to route the control compartment on this very simple sort of fixture. You can see it's just made out of plywood. Obviously, we've been using it for years. So uh, whenever you're ready, Jim, you can fire her up. I'll probably stop talking because this makes a bit of a racket. And we've got one. That's awesome. No problem. just sort of our storage for bodies which are carved and waiting to be assembled into finished instruments. So for instance up here on the shelf we have ones that are for neck through the body bases and these are really beautiful quilted maple. This is a incredibly rare and wonderful wood that only grows in the Pacific Northwest of North America Fantastic. ranging from like Oregon uh, up to southern British Columbia. This is obviously going to have a center, the centerpiece yes. there is, is actually the fitting for the neck through the neck. Exactly. These two wings will get glued onto the neck which runs the entire length of the instrument as an integral part of it. And these have been carved on a multiple spindle carving machine into this shape and then these nubs will get cut off and the ends of the horns finished and the end of the body finished. From the point of where this is now until the insertion of the neck. How much time does it take for you to then go from this point? In fact, how much time do you have currently now on this particular two pieces of this body? And then also, how much time do you have to finish the instrument? Well, at this point, I mean, there's the band sawing, which was, you know, probably honestly only about 10 minutes to band saw these blanks out. And the carving happens on a multiple spindle machine, which carve 16 pieces at a time, but it takes uh, a couple of hours to crawl its way through yes. 16, 16 pieces. Right. And all in all, there's actually for an instrument, one of these neck through the body bases, it takes us about 16 hours yes. of man hours uh, spread out over usually about a two, three month period, period. Okay. to complete the instrument. I see. Then over here, next to it, let me show you some other wacky woods we've got here. Let's see. These are, yeah, this interesting one. Boy, isn't that beautiful. This wow. is this is spalted maple, and this is actually maple wood which has mold growing in it, and uh, the, the trick to it is getting it while it's visually interesting and before the process goes too far and it turns to mush and loses its structural so integrity. The definition of spalted maple is literally there's a fungus growing in the wood. Yes, in fact, the word spalt is derived from the German word spalt, which is related to the word spoiled. Yes. Uh, and so that's... Spoiled that's, wood in exactly. essence. Exactly. Okay. So this is rotten wood, but it's really uh, interesting stuff. We've got some really wacky pieces of it here. And here's another different type of uh, spalting. This is buckeye burl, wow, which that. is uh, basically a whole, what's commonly known as a horse chestnut tree in most parts of the country. And this is from the stump section of it. And on this particular species, the spalting happens as this blue-gray cloud as opposed to the black lines like it happens in the maple. And uh, unfortunately, there's usually ingrown bark and other things. And we'll make plugs that'll match this shape to fill in with pieces of wood from this same piece. So the, so, so the areas that you're taking off are gonna enable you to plug out there? Absolutely, we save the cutoffs. And in fact, uh, I have a setup on the CNC machine to match 
these shapes so that I can machine plugs that'll fit in there. Back behind us are some hard maple neck blanks. These are already slotted for truss rods and for graphite rods, which I'll show you in a second. These are three plies of hard maple. And this maple comes from one of my suppliers I've dealt with for years. He's out in western New York State near Buffalo. One of the best areas in the world for clear white maple. The same supplier supplies maple neck blanks to Gibson, Samick, PV, okay. various companies. And geologically, one of the things that's really interesting about that area is when the glacier receded there, it left topsoil, which is about 60 feet deep. So when the maple trees grow, the roots don't touch shelf rock and they don't pick up gray stains. And the winters are cold and hard there, so the growth is fairly slow and you have generally very small, trees. absolutely small yeah. annular rings and very strong wood. But we don't even want to depend on that completely for the bases in particular. This is a carbon fiber rod that we have specially made for us. We paid for a custom die and it's through a process called pultrusion where thousands of fibers of the carbon fiber are pulled through a heated nozzle that impregnates it with epoxy resin at the same time. And this rod is incredibly stiff, in particular in this tall dimension, yeah. so that the stiffness and strength of it is equal to a piece of steel, but it only weighs 20% of the weight of a piece of steel. Right. And we put two of these into each one of our base necks as extra structural enhancement, and it also helps to bring out some of the low end frequencies, because if the neck isn't able to resonate at those lower frequencies, then they stay in the string and get transmitted through the whole instrument. Correct, I see. So this is a, just a really terrific piece of material. And that's actually the same truss rod that you would use for an ARC-6 guitar or for a bass? Well, or... these rods we use in the basses only. Uh -huh. In the guitars, the neck is shorter, there's not as much tension on it, and we don't need that kind of reinforcement. structural reinforcement. I see. We have an adjustable truss rod in everything. Yes. But these are uh, extra feature for, for the bases. I see. Right. Let me I, take, I had actually noticed, Stuart, you have some finished bodies, some painted bodies up top. All the finish work that you're doing in terms of painting is done in a separate area. Yes. We okay. have a, we have we subcontract out the painted finishes, but we do all the hand rubbed finishes here and okay. I can show you our little okay. little finishing cave which is Great. down the hall here.